think a cloud is forming directly over top of the field. Almost like out of a horror movie. <laughs> Floria dropping back, looks left, fires it that way. Pass is caught by Farrow. Makes a move at the 10, and he's brought down inside the 5. Fairmont State is running well right now. It'll be first and goal from the two. Looks like they bring in their heavy package. A few larger fellows try to punch this ball in. Floria out at a receiver spot. Farrow in the Wildcat. Farrow takes the snap. Flag is on the field. <laughs> Whistles blow. Looks like they had a guy move, and that's the second they got a Delay of game the first time they went to the Wildcat. And oh. So it was... Well, I could have swore the up guy moved. Yeah. The guy they had, it looked like they had an alignment in at fullback there. and Boy, it sure looked like he, he left early. But and I could be wrong on this, but throughout the years, usually when it's defensive offside, sometimes the officials let the play go just for a second to see. That play would have been one, so you could just decline it and take the touchdown, but they blew the whistle. Made me think it was a false start. Going to do the same thing. Farrow makes a little move and into the end zone. Touchdown, Fairmont State. They'll make it 27-9, awaiting the extra point. And an injured topper on the field. Try to get a number on him. So far, can't tell. It looks like it could be Dewan Jones, number six. But we will take a very quick break here and come right back on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. What brought me to Reynolds was the easeability of all of the doctors that are using my chart. So everybody can see everything, um, so you don't have to tell each doctor what's going on. It's already in front of them and they're ready to go with your appointment. Overall with Reynolds, the doctors are fantastic, nurses are great, they've got a great atmosphere here. Um, everybody is honestly a delight to work with from the time I make it from registration to my appointment and wrapping me up to send me out the door. My name is Megan Chambers and I'm a patient at WVU Medicine, Reynolds. Welcome back to West Family Stadium. The injured Hilltopper able to get up and walk off the field under his own power. Richard's on for the extra point. And it is good. Richard's son kicks another one, makes it 28-9 with 10.37 left to play here in this uh, WVU Medicine second quarter. The toppers trying to keep this one close. We'll keep it here since we just went to a break. And uh, we're going to have to get some plays here from the special teams, get some plays from everybody for West Liberty to try to get back into this one. It's still early on here, but we'll see if the toppers can try to pull off a repeat of the second half last week. Yeah, you dig these early holes and, and halves and you expend so much energy and so little time. And that's what happened last week. It just ran out of time. I had to Use timeouts and on the previous drive and unsuccessful one side kick, but we're back to four consecutive TD drives by the Falcons and West Liberty needs to find a way to answer again to get it back to a two score game. Richardson set to kick off for Fairmont State. That'd be Turner's for West Liberty. Looks like Clark is back there deep. And it 
will be Clark taking this kickoff up to the 20. Find some room on the outside to the 30. 35 brought down at the 40. That has been a bright spot for the toppers in this game. Some good returns in special teams. West Liberty returns the favor with a quality kick return of their own. And Oops. Well, scratch that. Yeah, missed that flag. It'll be a holding call. Liberty will start inside the 11-yard line. Still 10 minutes and 30 seconds left in the in the second quarter, so there's a lot of time to go, but already given up 28. Got to find an answer here. The officials help out the toppers a little bit, move the ball up just a yard. Garcia quickly throws it to his right. Not a ton of room there as the Fairmont State defense swarms West Liberty receiver uh, Corelli Johnson the second. Garcia gets his team set up. Drops back, looks left, fires the pass. Intended for number two, Rashawn Harvey, incomplete. And that brings up a third down and 10 from their own 12. Fairmont has done a good job on Harvey. West Liberty has not been able to get him untracked yet after a monster game last week, 14 receptions and I think 167 yards maybe. Garcia has time. Can't find anybody downfield. We'll call that a coverage sack for Fairmont State. That'll bring up a fourth down and the toppers will have to punt from their own end zone. Matt Curry on to kick. Wyatt Bratton on to snap for the toppers. Back deep to return, Kobe Harris. The 5'8", 175-pound redshirt sophomore receiver for Fairmont State. Kick is high, little short, and it takes a Fairmont State bounce, touched at about the 31-yard line, and Fairmont will have a short field to work with when they get back out here. So it'll be Michael Floria, Coach Woodman's offense again to see if they can continue their success here tonight. It's been nothing but impressive after that opening safety that the Falcons gave up, but they've had big plays, passing game, running game. Still 8.53 left. Floria with a little bit more of a Power looking set here. Gets under center for the first time all ball game. Hands this one off the middle, but there's pressure from the topper defense. Not this time. Big play for the defensive front. That was a huge play. Unfortunately, this is where Fairmont has thrived. They've converted several Several long down and distant situations. You talked about they were under center that time. Coach Wiley talked about that on the podcast this week. An injury on the field for West Liberty. It looks like it's 
Defensive end number nine, Briandre Horsley, 6'4", 210 junior. But he's up and moving. He's getting himself off the field. Looks like he should be able to get back into this ball game. We'll see how he feels. That topper defense looking for another big play here as it's now second down and 15 on the 42. Just under eight and a half minutes left in this WVU Medicine second quarter. Gloria in the pistol again. Sidecar moves to his left. He's going to hand this one off. Slips. And just gets back to the line of scrimmage. So it's third down and 15. And this is, again, Coach, you just said it not long ago, where Fairmont has had some big moments for themselves tonight. Big moments. Now they've gone to the run game a couple times in this situation, but this is conceivably four down territory anyway. So let's see what they draw up here. Are they saying let's get half of it back maybe? Or are they going to take a shot? Well, as they've done most of the night so far, they spread West Liberty's defense out. Floria feels the pressure, dumps it off quickly. Barely gets past the line of scrimmage for a very short gain, and it brings up fourth down and 14. And like you said, Coach, you're kind of in no man's land. Too far away for a field goal. Is it too short for a punt? Well, they'll bring out their punter anyways. Yeah, probably a good decision here. There's a lot of down and distance as you may go for it on your own, or on the opposition 36, but fourth and 14 is probably not one of them. <laughs> Mason back to return for West Liberty, almost blocked. That punt, good, will go out of bounds at about the five-yard line. Carson Moore almost got the block for West Liberty along with number nine, Beyonce Horsley. We're I'm looking for something positive. Uh, the West Liberty defense, <laughs> there was a time they needed to step out after being... Uh, down 28-9 and Fairmont taking over inside to 40 there. That was a pretty impressive defensive stance and forced the punt. Uh, in a perfect world, you don't want to have to go 94 yards for a touchdown, but it's better than what the alternative could be as Fairmont had gone four consecutive drives for, for touchdowns. West Liberty finally earns that stop, and I'll correct myself on that punt. The block almost happened for number eight, Cam Rice. Rudy Garcia down the middle of the field, almost there, just incomplete off the mark, was intended for number 10, Ben Turner. I like taking a shot there, though. You know, so much of the Hilltopper offense is kind of predicated on those quick outs. Teams start to cheat up, they cheat up, and eventually they'll take that away from you. So you got to make them honest. Second down and 10 from the five-yard line. 15 on the play clock for the Hilltoppers. Richards to the side of Garcia. Garcia is going to have to run after he feels the pressure. Can he get out of the pocket and back to the line of scrimmage? It's going to be close. That will bring up third down and long. So let's see what Coach Wiley and his offensive staff elect to do there. Do you <coughs> do you take a shot or do you maybe try to run the draw here or quarterback designated run and and pick this up? But well, Garcia surveys, looks left, looks back right. He's going to feel the pressure, gets out of the end zone, finds some room to run. He gets the first down and out of bounds. Ooh. What a play by Rudy Garcia. <laughs> I was thinking safety, two and one half. But uh, <laughs> give Rudy Garcia that credit for that because he pulled a Houdini, got out of there, and used his legs to move the chains. 
We'll see if this leads to anything great for the toppers as they continue this drive. 5.50 left in this WVU Medicine second quarter. Stacked receivers to both sides. Handoff up the middle. He's going to get stopped immediately. Maybe a short loss for Richardson. Or Richards. It will be second down on 11. Five and a half minutes left in this first half. Not much in the, the run game today either. Garcia's picked up a couple first downs with his feet, but Fairmont's having none of it on the ground. Garcia looks left, looks back right, finds the man coming out of the backfield. Richards has some room. Can he get to the first down up. marker? Just shy. It'll be third down and very short. When he sees that on film, he'll wish he had have broke that up. I mean, he was two yards shy. Just lower that head and move those chains again. Third and one from the 26. Garcia under center. Quarterback sneak and backs his way for a few yards and a first down. Four and a half minutes left in the half. That is a play that West Liberty has executed about as good as it could be last year numerous times they went to lining up quickly and using the quarterback sneak an injured player on the field for fairmont state number one brockton blair a 6-2 junior and he's already up and looks like he wants to rejoin the huddle but they're telling him you're gonna have to sit out of play for that Oh, okay, so a timeout was called. So we will take a very quick break. 4.28 left in this WVU Medicine second quarter. Toppers first and 10 from the 28. We'll be right back on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. It starts from the moment you enter the court. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official when I was a senior in high school, 17 years old. I think it's the best decision I've made. You could play and you could make extra money on the weekends on the side, and why not? In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just a game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience. Welcome back to West Family Stadium. First and 10 from the 28, 428 left in the first half. Garcia trips to his right. Fires this one, nice out route, caught. Pushed out of bounds at about the 40. Looks like it should be enough for a first down and it will be. That's a good ball there. It's not an easy throw to make. That, that throws a lot longer than you think it is. Chris Charles with the reception for West Liberty on the first down. Again, clock continues to run now in college football after a first down. More like the NFL. Four minutes left to go in the half. Man in motion. Nice little shovel pass forward. Gain of about five. Maybe four. We'll give it se second and six with 335 left in the first half. It's a good call when you're struggling to run the ball. Find different ways to run the ball. Ben Turner, sophomore receiver. On a little jet run, jet pass. Garcia looks right, steps up in the pocket, feels the pressure. Nice scramble, looking downfield, finds the man, pass is caught, and it will be enough for the first down. Spot him at the 39-yard line. It's another good ball by Rudy Garcia, but even a better job with his feet. He's, he's gotten himself out of some jams here, especially on this drive. Avoided the 
the safety not too long ago. Uh, not only is he able to get away, and I'm thoroughly impressed with that, but his ability to keep his eyes downfield while doing it. Good job of the receiver coming back to the ball there as well. Two and a half minutes left as the clock continues to run. Garcia hands it off. Big open space. Almost breaks away for a big, uh, a big gain, but they'll stop him for a gain of seven. Second down and three. Yards after contact on that play, and offensive line opened up a little bit of a hole. He took advantage of it, and the type of down and distance you like. We all live for second and threes. <laughs> Garcia looks right side, fires this one wide open. Is Charles? He's got some room to run. Does so. And he is down at about the 17-yard line. First and 10 for the toppers. 144 left in the half. Good job securing the football there, too, at the end of the run. Some yards after catch there. And this is where you want to take your time. Yep. A hot Falcon offense. You don't want to give there. They're going to throw the flag pass interference. Maybe a hold. We'll see, but it will go against Fairmont State. Yeah, that was an easy call there. Got beat on the fade route. And if the DB doesn't do that, it's going to be a touchdown anyway. Probably a smart play. The intended receiver, number two, Rashawn Harvey. And you know that secondary had his name with a bunch of stars around it on the scouting report this week. They do call it pass interference. They get the 15-yarder. Puts the ball at the two-yard line with 80 seconds remaining in the first half. Now this is where, well, the clock won't start until the ball snapped. But, again, if you don't get it in the end zone, you're not rushing to the line of scrimmage. You've got to hopefully bleed this if you don't score on this play. Ball. Tipped, thrown, caught. Wow. What a play. Rashawn Harvey, the touchdown. Rudy Garcia, a magician out there on that drive. Well, and it's crazy. The way things happen in football games, and sometimes the breaks go your way and sometimes they don't. Hilltoppers haven't gotten many breaks, but that one, uh, that's pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Houdini again? Yeah. The law of average is saying one had to go West Liberty's way at some point. But that had disaster all over it. <laughs> and, and the presence of mind when he catches that to, to make the TD throw. The snap, the hold, the kick is good. Make it 28-16 with 1.16 left to play here in the first half at West Family Stadium. We will take a very quick break and be right back on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. What if your bank offers CDs with consistently competitive and higher interest rates? That's what I want. What if, unlike other banks, they're normally open more hours? And they don't use high teaser rates on CDs only to lower them later. Isn't that the way all banks should be? And even more, several of their CD accounts have some of the best interest rates. That's money in the bank. The right bank. Open your CD account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. And welcome back to West Family Stadium. Topper's getting ready to kick off. 116 remaining in the half. They will try to make sure Fairmont can't get any more points before they head into the locker room. And West Liberty will receive the second half kickoff. And from where they were not long ago to a 12-point game at halftime, uh, that's a win for West Liberty for sure. Well, it's a win because they were down 28-9 to nine after a short punt. The Falcons yep. had it first and 10 down around to 30, didn't they? Yes, they did. A little pooch kick. Caught it about the 30, I'm sorry, 26-yard line. And quickly there to cover the West Liberty special teams. So anyway, West Liberty gets the stop, forces the Falcons the punt, and a 94-yard drive. 
We'll take it. Coach Wiley enjoys that. Everybody for West Liberty enjoys that one. Gave the defense some time to breathe and catch a break in this first half. And uh, to get a drive like that not only, again, helps the defense, but uh, brings a little bit of life back into the offense, saying, hey, we did this last week. We, we started off a little slow. We were coming back, and it looks like they could be doing the same here tonight. And remember, college football, though, a minute 11, there's an eternity, and Fairmont does have two timeouts, so you got to find a way to get a stop here. Long throw down the right side for Floria. Pass, bobbled. Did he have possession before he went out? They say he did. And what a pass and catch for Gage Michael. Well, Sliberty a victim to the chunk play again. That was a beautifully thrown ball and a really nice catch. And the Falcons find themselves back to where they were yep. <laughs> before the TD drive. And the clock will stop on that one because the runner went out of bounds after the catch. It well, I believe it does stop in the last Okay, minutes. that's correct. As, yeah. And we got the fog rolling back in. Floria looking left. Going to have to run that way. Didn't have a man open. Toppers trying to get there. They do. They keep him in bounds. Clock will run. Stopped at the 30-yard line for a gain of just three. It's a big hit there. Come on, West Liberty. Got to get up. Fairmont getting set at the line of scrimmage. 40 seconds remain in the half. Floria looking left again. Fires this one to the end zone. Double covered out of bounds. Incomplete. That'll bring up third down and seven with 33 seconds remaining. Now this probably is four down territory. So back to Fairmont. They still have those two timeouts in their pocket with 33 seconds left. So from here it's a 47-yard field goal. And I probably should have done more homework. I don't know what kind of leg their kicker has. We'll be on the safe side, just Division II kickers. That's that's a tough one sometimes. 47 for an NFL guy is, can be tough at times, especially outdoors on top of a hill like this. Floria hands this one off. He's going to be stopped in the backfield. Farrow trying to go somewhere, but he is brought down by Briandre Horsley. A flag goes flying. Fairmont is stating that it's against West Liberty, but we'll wait for the official's call. I hope this isn't against West Liberty. It happened last week. They had a personal foul late in the half, and it led to three points. But let's hope this is uh, offsetting maybe. But the way the official's standing... Yeah, they're having a bit of a discussion here, and that'll be on Fairmont sophomore receiver Winston Page, and pushes them definitely out of field goal position. That will also make it. It's fourth down. Yeah, so fourth down and forever. Punt here. Well, so after the big play to start this drive, the the really big play, West Liberty flexes their their muscles again and force it out. Just make sure you don't do anything crazy on this. And the way this game was headed, 28-16 doesn't look that bad now. Exactly. Scout Arthur on to punt for Fairmont State. And we see a little bit more of late first half magic with the toppers. Now it looks like Coach Wiley calls a timeout. 14 seconds remain here in the first half. And it makes me wonder if maybe the toppers will maybe try to block this punt or something special that they saw on film. Uh, we hear about that kind of stuff all the time. Coach Wiley's. Speaking with the officials, some of the assistant coaches speak with the rest of the team. And again, the toppers.
Okay, so they re reset the game clock to 19 seconds. It will start on the snap. And maybe that was the conversation Coach Wiley had with him. Five seconds ran after he called the timeout. Pressure up the middle, almost going to block again, but a flag will be thrown. Is it running into or roughing the kicker? It'll go against the toppers. Let's hope they stay consistent and it's uh, running into. Mm -hmm. As we're waiting on this call, I'm hoping, Todd, that uh, – we may be able to bring in the uh, new West Liberty University president, Tim Borchers. And hopefully maybe we can get President Borchers on uh, as we're preparing to start that third quarter. Absolutely. It will be the running into the kicker variety of the penalty, so it'll be a five-yarder tacked on to the end of the return. It will be West Liberty possession with 12 seconds left in the half. Ball will be at the five-yard line, so 95-yard field to go in 12 seconds. We're going to see a, a knee here, I'm assuming. And it will be Garcia under center. You don't see that often. Takes the knee. And that will be the end of the first half. Toppers down 28-16 to, to Fairmont State in the 2023 home opener here at West Family Stadium. But uh, if you were watching for the entirety of that first half, it could have been a lot worse than this. And the toppers look like they could be coming back again, just like they did last week up at Walsh. Well, we will take a break here and come back in a little bit with the Comfort Maker halftime show here on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. What if your bank offers CDs with consistently competitive and higher interest rates? That's what I want. What if, unlike other banks, they're normally open more hours? And they don't use high teaser rates on CDs only to lower them later. Isn't that the way all banks should be? And even more, several of their CD accounts have some of the best interest rates. That's money in the bank. The right bank. Open your CD account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company. You want to plan with people you know, like the Health Plan. Known for exceptional local customer service and are headquartered right here in West Virginia. We are families, we are businesses, and we are all moving forward together. We are here for you, the Health Plan. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Hi, I'm Heather, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is getting the perfect bite. It's probably not the first bite, it's the second or the third, with the juicy chicken and the delicious pickle. The bite with the pickle is it. I mean, that is like the magic combination. Check one, two.
You shouldn't pay maintenance fees or be required to have a minimum balance in your checking account. And if you use an ATM and have to pay a fee, your bank should pay you back for that. That's what you get with Casasa Cash, only at Belmont Savings Bank. The region's largest restoration firm, responding from five locations. When disaster strikes your home or business, call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. It pays for my master's degree. I can't believe that this happened. It's just a pivotal, life-changing moment. They'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. Hey, go daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of a team committed to doing the job right. They call him dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW, the power professionals in your neighborhood. Where are you going? The store in West Liberty. The store is open seven days a week with daily lunch specials, hot food and cold sandwiches, Patsy's Pizza, and a wide selection of chips, pop, and other snacks, as well as household goods and hygiene products. We've also got a wide selection of beer and an ATM. Stop on in and check out the store, located at the top of the hill in the town of West Liberty, a proud supporter of Hilltopper Athletics. Well, for over 25 years, I've practiced at Wheeling Hospital and WV Wheeling Hospital. I grew up here. I am dedicated and feel a commitment to the Ohio Valley, and I believe that's our continued mission. We've been challenged over the past three years with the pandemic, but we've emerged stronger. The people that work here are here mostly because they want to be here. And when there is a desire to be at work, it makes for a more productive area and certainly a happier area. Chick-fil-A has really helped me from leadership styles to understanding different levels of communication. I'm actually a team leader at this point. It's a great experience and it's because of my team and the guests. The region's largest restoration firm, responding from five locations. When disaster strikes your home or business, call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Grab a meal at the Dirty Dog Tavern. Located at the top of the hill in West Liberty, Dirty Dog Tavern offers a family-friendly atmosphere with a full menu as well as adult beverages. Catch the game during weekday happy hours, play games like darts or pool, or enjoy the deck with your family and friends. Open Monday through Saturday at 4 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 8. Come to the Dirty Dog Tavern in the town of West Liberty, a proud supporter of Hilltopper Athletics. difference. I immediately called Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration to see if they could clean and restore my home. Not only did they do that, but they even made it more beautiful than it was before the fire. If everyone ever has a tragedy like ours, I highly recommend you call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Welcome back to West Family Stadium in the Comfort Maker Halftime Show. Uh, we've got a special interview here in the booth, and Coach Allen will take care of that. Coach, take it away. Well, we got a special guest, uh, our new president, Dr. Tim Borchers. So, Dr. Borchers, welcome, and your thoughts. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, certainly a, a somber note to start the, start the game, honoring uh, Gary West. But a uh, beautiful night for football, and uh, I'm really enjoying my time on campus getting to know everyone and uh, enjoying taking in all the athletic events in our first football game here at home and you have your beautiful wife with you tonight yep she's enjoying the game and 
uh, fun for fun for us to get out and meet a lot of the alums and meet some of the donors and uh, enjoy some time with the students. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's been a crazy night starting with that torrential rain. Fortunately, you weren't walking down here during that, but <clears throat> you started July 1st, came to campus that first week. You've been here about two months. What's your initial reflections? What's your thoughts? How have you handled your business in two months? Well, I've really been trying to meet a lot of people. So uh, a lot of individual meetings, a lot of group meetings. What I found is that people really love West Liberty. Uh, the, the students here are great. And I think our faculty and staff enjoy working with our students. And, and really, that's what I hear is that it's all about the students and helping them be successful. You've, uh, you're in the president's house. You've welcomed many groups. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we enjoy living on top of the hill in Colonial Heights. We've had uh, several groups of students over. We invited all the faculty and staff over. Uh, we've had uh, some um, different groups there. All the students came for a dessert one night, and we're looking to have some alumni up there during during homecoming. And this obviously isn't your first athletic event. Uh, been to soccer. Been to soccer, been to volleyball, been to soccer again, and now football. So <laughs> well, and, <laughs> trying and, to make the rounds. And I'll give you credit. Uh, you sat through the whole soccer game on that Sunday afternoon in 90-degree heat, and then the volleyball team treated you to a thrilling five-set win about two hours and 50 minutes worth. Yeah, I found the, the shade during the soccer game is back up by the baseball field, so that was <laughs> a, a trick that I learned. But, yeah, a thrilling volleyball victory the other night. Uh, the games all seemed to go to 25-23, and the last set went to 15-13 and came from behind to, to pull it out. So well, really exciting to watch that. Well, we'll give you the credit for that win. <laughs> uh, I've already put the pressure on Dr. Borchers, being from Nebraska, and a, a Cornhusker fan. He's guaranteeing a win this weekend, right? Yes, I'm putting the, <laughs> the black and gold aside for a day, and we'll be in my red on Saturday. <laughs> um, thoughts of the stadium. Gary West obviously financed the majority of this undertaking your first football game here what are the views like elaborate a little well, bit it's it's been it's been beautiful uh setting with the the trees and i just can't wait for for the colors to turn in the fall uh to to be here for a football game i'm sure that will be one of the best settings in all of college football when when that happens but great field uh just a great setting i think it's been uh, set up really well with how the team enters and and the fans it never n not any bad views here uh, so it seems like a beautiful place to play, and I'm sure it's great when we're recruiting students, but it's also really great for the alums to come back to and, and enjoy their, their time here as well. Well, I appreciate you coming on the air with us, uh, Topper fans. We're going to try to get him on and do a pregame here in one of these next couple of home games, so we'll, uh, we'll get some social media out for that. But thanks for joining us. Get back out to VIP, meet more people, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. We will take a very quick break and be right back for more of the Comfort Maker Halftime Show on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. We are there for you, to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. The health plan proudly supports our active and healthy communities and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. Log on to healthplan.org for more information. We are there for you. To care for you at the health plan, we are here for you. Welcome back to the Comfort Maker Halftime Show. Halftime is almost over as we take a look at the Dirty Dog Halftime stats. Uh, passing yards in favor of Fairmont State, but not by much, 160 to 147. They do have the uh, edge in rushing yards, 92 to 33. Uh, one turnover for the toppers. First downs almost even, uh, 11 first downs to 10 in favor of Fairmont State. And Fairmont, seven penalties so far and only four for the Hilltoppers. Let we take a look at some of the individual stats so far in this ball game. Uh, for the toppers, Rudy Garcia netted 18 yards on the ground. Kadeem Richards at 16. Garcia, 15 of 20. With one interception, one touchdown, and 147 yards, a long of 42. Uh, Chris Charles receiving five receptions, 47 yards. Rashawn Harvey continuing a good game, a great game last week. So far, three receptions, 25 yards, but the one big touchdown as well. Yeah, the, the, the stats are kind of what we would assume it to be with the score, 28-16. I think probably the biggest stat, and it's the simplest number, 
is the turnovers. Yep. Um, West Liberty had a 2 nothing lead, had a chance to field a, a very short-shanked free kick, uh, didn't field the ball, and they took advantage of the other turnover scoring drive. So, again, West Liberty 28-16. you got to kind of be thinking, like, Let's get our breath now. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, this could have been much, much worse for the toppers. That will end our uh, Comfort Maker halftime show and the Dirty Dog halftime stats and bring us to our health plan third quarter. Toppers receiving this second half kick. Up to the 15 to the 20. Good blocking. 25-30. Up to the 35. Close to the 40. Tremendous return for the health toppers. That was number 16, Joshua Clark. Todd, here's one for you. I am huge on deferring and getting the second half kickoff exactly for this reason. And I don't know, unless it was some crazy circumstance, if I win that toss, I'm deferring every single game. Yep. And... The defense, I mean, the way they started this game, it's hard to not say, yeah, absolutely. We'll defer every time if you can get that safety and put points on the board as a defense in your first drive of the ball game. Garcia, play action, rolls right, fires at middle of the field. Nice play there. Running again, still on his feet, and for more than just a first down, a big gain into Fairmont territory. They're trying to say there was a fumble. Officials say no, but a good catch and run by the man that had the good return. Number 16, Joshua Clark. A little play action and no look pass there, but getting back to that decision, you battle back, you make it 28-16, you get to receive this kickoff, you get a great return, and you're already down to the 42-yard line. Clark in motion. He takes a little jet sweep, and he gets brought down in the backfield. Good job there by number one, Brockton Blair, linebacker for Fairmont. And the Falcon defense steps up on the jet sweep there, and West Liberty used that play with success in the second quarter, actually on a TD drive, but uh, the Falcons sniffed that out, and West Liberty's behind the chains here a little bit. And Fairmont's defense said you had two good plays on us in a row, Mr. Clark. We will not allow a third. I'll bring up second down and 15. Garcia hands this one off to Richards. He's hit quickly. Gains a couple yards and is brought down, so that'll bring up third down and 13. With just over 13 minutes to go here in the health plan third quarter. And you may think I'm crazy here, but I'm not so sure this isn't two down territory. If you pick up seven yards on this, I may be very tempted to go for a fourth and five or so. Garcia switches around the formation just a bit based on the defense. He sees, drops back, fires it right side of the field. Man is open. Get, get the catch so close. Intended for number five, Chris Charles. He has had a very good game tonight. That one just in and out of his hands. Yeah, it, it was a tough catch. It was actually a great ball, and there was separation there. Uh, boy, what a difference in a game if he hangs on to that. But... It, it was a tough catch looking back yes. over his shoulder, and that's a total hands catch. And But we talked about the breaks in a football game. They go your way. They don't go your way. But just think if he catches that, West well, Liberty's first and goal inside to five. And Good high hanging punt here. Fair catch called for and caught at about the 12-yard line. That's where Fairmont will start their drive, and a great punt there by Matt Curry. The officials will call for a timeout. We will take the break as well. Our first of the health plan third quarter, 12.42 to go in the third, 28-16 is the score in favor of Fairmont. We will be right back on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. Undo's Catering, family owned since 1953. With four newly remodeled catering facilities throughout the Ohio Valley, Undo's can accommodate banquets from 25 to 700 guests. Undo's caters weddings, picnics, corporate events, holiday events, and job site drop-offs for the construction and oil and gas industry. Call 304-233-5566 today. Undo's. Right 
is our main ingredient. Undose. Fire alarm activation in the Wagner building. It was a space heater that had caught on fire, and it was really a, a major smoke event. We immediately called Panhandle, and they were on the scene rather quickly and got their air cleaning machines, smoke eating machines. They cleaned our duct work inside and out, painted the walls, shampooed the carpets, cleaned every flat surface in the office, vacuumed, and got us up and running really quickly. Panhandle did a great job. And welcome back to West Family Stadium here on the beautiful campus of West Liberty University. And hopefully you can see some of that fog coming out of those trees over there. I don't think the camera the, really gives it justice to how ominous it looks. Good run here for Fairmont State. Finds some open room. Makes a cutback, but finally brought down after a large chunk. Gain for quite a few by Derek Crosby the second. You know, I hate to keep using that word chunk play, but that's pretty much been the recipe for success for Fairmont in this game. It's four touchdowns, and they've probably got five huge chunk plays in this game that that has chewed up a lot of real estate. We'll see if they go back to Crosby after that big run. It's now first and ten on the 39-yard line. Floria looking. He's going to run it himself. And the topper defense is there for a very short game, maybe a yard and a half. That'll bring up second down and about eight. Well, that was a huge stick there. Sometimes uh, it's open season on a quarterback. You can't hit him much in <laughs> today's game, but that type of play, that's the time you're going to get a chance to deliver the hit. And uh, I can't, I didn't catch the number who delivered that hit, but. Florio will remember that one for a while. Yeah, you get an opportunity, you're going to take it. Floria will hand this one off. Crosby, nowhere to go on this one. After his last carry was a big gain, no gain on that third down and eight coming up for the toppers. Here's an unusual stat for you. And I can't believe this is right, but our stat sheet is saying on third down, Fairmont is three for three. Let's take a look here. Well, Floria is back, fires it downfield. Oh, man, was covered, but he's still with a one-handed catch. Unbelievable job by Gage Michael. Holds the defender off with his left and just brought it in. That's almost exactly the same area of the field where they hit the big play late in the second quarter. But, again, we talk about the chunk plays and how many crucial third down conversions behind the chains that Fairmont has been able to, to pull off today. The second big gain play of this drive. Just under 10 minutes left in the health play in third quarter. Crosby takes the handoff, finds some room on the left side, gets a good block, nice spin move. Gets just inside the 15-yard line. And it will be a first down for Fairmont State. Nine thirty-six to go. And the officials now start the clock. Paramount to get him out of the end zone. You could potentially give up three on this drive, and it's still a two-score game. Floria play action, fires it left, incomplete. Pass was intended for number five, Winston Page. Coverage for the toppers was number one, Brennan Bailey. Fairmont getting close to 300 yards of total offense here, and 
a little less than two and a half quarters. Second down and 10 from the 14 yard line. Play clock down to eight already for Fairmont State. Crosby takes the handoff, runs left side, finds a little space, and he's into the end zone for the Fairmont State touchdown. Another big play. Richardson on to try to make this a 35-16 game. And he does. 35-16 is the score. 9.06 left to go in the third quarter, the health plan third quarter. We will take a quick break and be right back for more on the MEC Digital Network on Topper Station. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the 12 proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Welcome back to West Family Stadium, Fairmont State. Leading it 35 to 16, 906 left in the health plan third quarter. And we take a look at the series history between these two teams. It's uh, Fairmont has a narrow lead of 43, 40 and 5. After five consecutive wins for Fairmont from 2015 to 2019, West Liberty has won two straight before tonight. And they won last year in overtime, 27 to 24, as Fairmont almost had the rally last season, but that fell short. Uh, kind of like the toppers last week out at Walsh, and they're going to attempt to do that again here tonight in the second half. As the toppers have their returners back, it will be... Number 10, Ben Turner. Number 16, Joshua Clark. Clark had three big plays. I'm sorry, two big plays for the toppers last possession. Fairmont up to 340 yards of total offense. West Liberty at 202. Richardson, a good boot. Return man to the 25. Another good return. A flag, though. Pushed out of bounds. Clark, again, maybe a little bit of benefit of whatever the penalty call is. So a block, block in the back on the toppers will push the line of scrimmage back to the 14-yard line. Here's a stat for you, Todd. And I've never heard this stat. I would like to know what percentage of return plays have a penalty. And you wonder why USFL in these places are going to different kickoff rules. Yeah, at times it makes you wonder, maybe <laughs> after seeing some of those penalties and constantly seeing those, whether it's a punt or a kickoff, maybe we should just get rid of those kickoffs and things of that nature. We'll reduce injuries and reduce some of the penalties too. I mean, I'm a traditionalist, but it is just incredible how many penalties. And, and maybe they are. I'm not saying that they're not penalties. Right. Rough snap there, Garcia. Did he get that ball to the line of scrimmage? Oh, they say there was a man there, so no intentional grounding, but a good job by Garcia. 
feeling that pressure and getting rid of it. Well, and what's so important, uh, they had the bobbled snap there. It's it's third and one, meaning if he doesn't get the ball out of his hands, it's third and 18. And With that run, did he get there? They will give West Liberty the first down. They go to the quarterback sneak again on third down, as we had referenced in the first half. But they execute that, I don't want to say 100% of the time, but <laughs> the number is pretty darn good over the last couple seasons. Garcia takes a look at the sideline, getting a play call. Sends a man in motion. Fires it quickly. Gets some blocking on the outside. Tries to cut it back. It's a game of about four. We'll call it second down and six. Hoppers taking their time on this drive. Garcia sees a lot of bodies up at that line of scrimmage. Garcia, nice little option play there. Richards gets a little bit, a little gain. We'll go third down and five. He's got to put a smile on Dr. Borchers' face if he grew up watching... Nebraska football at a younger age for a lot of those option plays. Tommy Frazier, correct? Yeah, and way before Jack Mildred. And no, he was Oklahoma's quarterback. <laughs> but, uh, still mad about the 1971 game of the century. <laughs> Nebraska beat Oklahoma. Garcia feels the pressure, gets this pass off, but incomplete. That will bring up fourth down and five with 6-12 left to play here in the health plan third quarter. That will bring the punt team on. Matt Curry back out. He's had some good kicks tonight. Yeah, West Liberty, we're back in that danger zone again where this game can get away from you. Fast moving clock in this quarter down to six minutes. and Got to start taking uh, advantage of every offensive possession. Pressure coming from Fairmont. Oh, shank this one. He announcer's curse. I apologize. I had to say he's been kicking well. That one we'll see where they spot it officially. Looks like at the 40-yard line going in as the topper defense gets back out on the field. Fairmont's had some short fields today. We'll see if they continue to go to Crosby, who had a big drive, last possession for Fairmont State. You know, we talk a little bit about the rivalry that's developed between these two schools about an hour and a half away. Um, Fairmont, a lot of their upper administration here tonight, and including their new president, uh, President Davis. Had a chance to catch up with him before the game. Handoff goes to Farrow. Good blocking up front. Breaks one tackle, but finally brought down, but not before. Gaining the first down at the 30-yard line. First and 10, Fairmont State. Crosby the second back into the game. A flag is thrown while both teams were getting set up for play calls. And it looks like it will be against West Liberty. We'll see what the call is.
Well, the personal foul will not help the topper's cause. As 15 yards in favor of Fairmont State. They move up to the 15-yard line, first and 10. About five and a half minutes remain in this health plan third quarter. Quickly to the line of scrimmage out of the huddle, wasting no time. Farrow, the handoff. Topper front four is there. Takes him down for no gain. Another flag. And that looks like to be a topper defender down on the ground as well. I'm not sure if that was number eight or number nine. It's either Cam Rice or Briandre Horsley. It is Cam Rice, I believe. Still waiting to hear what the penalty is. So Fairmont gives the personal foul penalty right back. And it's good to see Cam Rice able to get up and walk off the field under his own power. Looks like he's telling him he got rolled up on. That will bring up second down. From the 30, they have to get to the 5 for a first down. Hate to beat it to death, but this is where Fairmont's been at their best. Under center is Floria. Haven't seen that much tonight. Play action. Fires it down the middle of the field. The defense was there, but the pass was completed. And it got back to the original line of scrimmage. Pass was caught by Kobe Harris. He's been a good return man for them tonight. So third and 10 from the 15. About four and a half minutes left to play here in the health plan third quarter. Big third down, Fairmont is four of six on the day. Floria right side, tosses it up, pass is caught for the touchdown again. Number 13, Gage Michael. He's had some highlight real catches tonight, and that was another one. Yeah, all on the right side of the field. And an injured topper on that play. Looks like a cramp, so hopefully it's nothing too serious. Looks like it was... I didn't quite catch a number. I thought I did, but I'm not certain. But it looked like it was number 41, Trent Crawford. And it was. He's able to get up and walk off the field under his own power. Hopefully it was just a cramp. And it might be cooling off a little bit after the rain shower earlier today, but still not cold. Yeah, a little humidity as well. Back on for the extra point, Emmanuel Richardson. The kick is good. Make it 42 to 16 in favor of Fairmont State. 4.14 left to play in the health plan third quarter. We will take a quick break and be right back for more on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. The Panhandle Difference. It was a really easy process uh, getting started with them and then bam, it just took off. We've had a lot of gatherings here. We've had 
um, a whole basketball team. We've had lots of family dinners, birthday parties. I mean, I can't wait for holidays to come. It's, it's just, it's a great kitchen. Honestly, it, it couldn't have turned out any better. Welcome back. Man, still down on the field for the toppers. And I'm not sure if that's a cramp as well as last time, but we got guys going down. Luckily, they're getting back up for the toppers. It seems like they're able to go back into the ball game. Hopefully, that is the same. It's a large difference in score here in the health plan third quarter, 42 to 16. And West Liberty's 2023 home opener here at West Family Stadium. And getting back up on his feet. Number six for the Hilltoppers. It's Dewan Jones. Take a look at the, some of the stats up to this point. Passing yards in favor of Fairmont there up to 223 passing yards on the night. 157 rushing yards. Yeah, just really, really balanced. And they've hit big plays in both the passing game and the running game. And they've... Uh, They've been just very efficient. West Liberty has not tackled well at times in this game, and they've got some skill position players that if you miss tackles, they're going to make you pay. Kick deep, caught. Joshua Clark gets another good return up to the 30 and finally brought down. He's had a good job. He's done a really good job tonight on special teams. The topper offense set to get back out there. Yeah, the kick return. West Liberty has benefited from that. And, you know, it just goes back how quickly this game can turn. West Liberty gets the, the kick off to start this half and it quickly got up to midfield and went deep on third down and would have been a tough catch, but boy, if we make that catch, it's it's going to be a five-point game. Yep. Quick snap. Still on his feet and a very good run there. Kadeem Richards. It's a gain of five. What looked like he would be stopped for about a gain of two or three and just kept on churning. Second down and five from the 36. Three and a half minutes left in the health plan third quarter. Play action. Quickly out. Charles. It's a gain of about two. I'm sorry, I take that back. That was Rashawn Harvey. It got me the mouthpieces. They have similar colored mouthpieces. Thought it was him. Hopefully here, maybe at the end of this quarter, we'll be joined by Mountain East Conference Commissioner Reed Amos. Big third down. Garcia just needs three yards, fires it quickly, pass is caught, and he's going to be brought down, but not before a big first down. Once again, number two, Rashawn Harvey. Reliable. Big play, and, you know, Rudy Garcia's had a, a pretty solid game to this point. He's thrown the ball pretty well. He's, he's picked up a couple first downs with his legs. Does have the one turnover, but... West Liberty just hasn't been able to execute that big play when, when they've needed, especially on defense. Garcia looking downfield, finds 
Man out of the backfield, Richards across the middle, trying to get to the sideline, but brought down by a host of Fairmont tacklers. But a good gain of about five, second and five. It's a good word, host of tacklers. That's a good football <laughs> cliche. I'm sure Don Clegg wrote that in an article somewhere in his life. 100% did. Don was the guy that made me sound smart when I used to call these games. Rudy looks to the middle. Again, underneath, Rashawn Harvey, very close to a first down. They're going to give it to him. It'll be first and ten. You know, when Don was a writer, um, my favorite sports term that he used a lot is sunsplash. <laughs> and I was listening to a college football game the other day when I was driving, and the announcer used sunsplash. <laughs> so I thought... Uh, I wish Don would have heard that. But he was probably watching the Pirates in college <laughs> football season. Garcia hands this one off for Richards, but immediately met by the front of that Fairmont State defense, number 66, Nemo Roberts, the six-foot sophomore defensive tackle. Thirty-five seconds remain here in the health plan third quarter. Second down and twelve from the thirty-five. Garcia setting things up. Clock down to fifteen seconds. Looking, fires it. Got a man open. It's Turner at the ten. Ball is loose. And it looks like it is picked up by Fairmont State. A flag late after the whistle. And unfortunate there for the Hilltoppers. Uh, it's been one of those nights. Picture perfect ball thrown. Turner, great catch. Trying to get to the end zone and get stripped. So push Fairmont back to about the three-yard line after a hit by someone on Fairmont's defense after the fumble recovery. Here comes their offense with six seconds left in the health play in third quarter, first and ten from the four-yard line. Gloria under center, hands this one off, right side. Topper defense is there, close to the goal line. They're going to say he stopped at the two, loss of two. So to bring up second down and 12 from the two-yard line, and that will be it for the health plan third quarter. We will take a break and head to the fourth once we come back on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. I got involved in officiating volleyball eight years after I played Division I in college. Saying yes to volleyball officiating will give you the privilege to be a part of one of the most exciting sports around. I'm a speaker. A builder. I coach. Culinary arts. Auditor. A firefighter. For anyone contemplating becoming a volleyball official. Just go for it. Take the plunge. Open the door. Say yes to officiating. Learn more about how to get involved at sayyestoofficiating.com. Brought me to Reynolds was the easeability of all of the doctors that are using my chart. So everybody can see everything. Um, so you don't have to tell each doctor what's going on. It's already in front of them and they're ready to go with your appointment. Overall with Reynolds, the doctors are fantastic. Nurses are great. They've got a great atmosphere here. Um, everybody is honestly a delight to work with from the time I make it from registration to my appointment and wrapping me up to send me out the door. My name is Megan Chambers and I'm a patient at WVU Medicine, Reynolds. Welcome back to West Family Stadium for the Panhandle fourth quarter. Toppers down 42 to 16. Fairmont State backed up. The Toppers have already forced one safety in the first points of this ball game were West Liberties to make it 2 0 on the first drive of the game. And they're going to try to do so here in the beginnings of the fourth quarter. 
I could go for another safety and then. They just do a quarterback sneak. Everybody, no splits whatsoever. And Floria maybe gained half a yard. And another injury on the field. Again, didn't see a number on this one. It was just kind of in the middle of the pile. You saw Fairmont's offensive line get up there very quickly all together. And I think it's number eight, Cam Rice. I believe so. Looking at the stats as the trainers are out on the field, Fairmont, 378 yards total offense, but West Liberty's at 278. You know, it's not like they haven't moved the football today. Right. Just haven't been able to put that ball in the end zone, and at times some misfortune. Uh, again, the, the, can, the, the Turner catch and ball pops out right as he's going towards the goal line. And it's good to see Cam Rice able to get up and get off the field under his own power. So both teams back out on the field. Third and ten from the four-yard line. Floria rolling left, feels the pressure, pass, tipped, almost picked off, but that'll bring up fourth down and ten. There's the old quarterback throwing back across his body. And, but we've talked, this will be the third time I've probably mentioned this, that in any type of these games, there are unusual plays that sometimes go your way, sometimes you don't. Fairmont gets the big strip on the long pass play. West Liberty has a chance there, and they just can't haul it in. Just so many chances to make plays. Braden Mason back to return for West Liberty. A decent kick under the pressure. He was under a good catch there. Off the hop, return to the 35 to the 30. Gets pushed out of bounds. He got close to the 25. Let's see where they spot him. Got another running into the kicker. We'll wait for the official's call. I could have swore he threw the flag. I don't see it laying there, but it definitely would be running into the kicker. And this one may be a little bit more acceptable knowing that the punter was not as far back as he usually is because of the back of the end zone. So they'll re-kick this one instead of tacking it on to the end of the run, which good call by Coach Woodman in Fairmont State. Yeah, because it was another quality return. But we talk about all these stats and the weird plays, but I still think other than the score, which is the most important, it's the 3-0 differential in the turnovers. Can't agree more with that. This one a much better kick, fair caught by Braden Mason. So instead of being at the 26 yard line, they're at the opposite 49. As the topper offense will make their way back out onto the field, 14-12 to play in this panhandle fourth quarter. And a timeout on the field. We will take a quick timeout as well. And we'll be right back for more on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. Hi, I'm Heather, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is getting the perfect bite. It's probably not the first bite, it's the second or the third, with the juicy chicken and the delicious pickle. The bite with the pickle is it. I mean, that is like the magic combination. You shouldn't pay maintenance fees or be required to have a minimum balance in your checking account. And if you use an ATM and have to pay a fee, your bank should pay you back for that. But that's what you get with Casasa Cash, only at Belmont Savings Bank.
the region's largest restoration firm, responding from five locations. When disaster strikes your home or business, call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. It pays for my master's degree. I can't believe that this happened. It's just a pivotal, life-changing moment. Welcome back to West Family Stadium and the Panhandle fourth quarter underway. 14-12 remaining in this ball game. 42-16 Fairmont State has looked tremendous tonight. Rudy Garcia. Play action to Richards back out as Rashawn Harvey incomplete. He doesn't drop many. I'll bring up second down and ten after the incompletion. He's caught seven more balls tonight for 56 yards. That's 21 receptions in two games with a quarter to go. We've seen him have some big moments in these first two weeks of the season. Does he have any more in him tonight? Garcia looking right, fires it, passes there, tipped, but incomplete. Was intended for Chris Charles, number five. Third down and ten coming up. That ball was tipped away by Javon Jackson. I believe he was the man with the interception earlier tonight. Almost had another one. Yeah, he made a good break on the ball there. Garcia has three receivers to his left, one to the top of the screen, and a lone sidecar in Richards. Looking left. Pass is caught for the first down and a little bit more. Great job at finding the open area by number 15, Christian Banks. Garcia's numbers are are way more than acceptable tonight. Garcia feels the pressure, steps up in the pocket, looking, fires it, there's a man open, it's Harvey, caught at the 10, got some space. Into the end zone for a hilltopper touchdown. Garcia again making plays with his feet and having the presence of mind to get his head up and and find the blown coverage on the scramble. That makes it 42 to 22. And Waddell on for the extra point. Try to make it a 19-point ball game with 13-21 left to go in the Panhandle fourth quarter. The kick is good. And it is a 19-point game, 42-23. We will take a quick break and come right back on the Mountain East Conference digital, digital network on Topper Station. They'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. Go Daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of a team committed to doing the job right. They call him Dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW, the power professionals in your neighborhood. Welcome back to West Family Stadium. The Toppers getting a big touchdown they needed there. They're looking for more as this game continues. We'll see if they try to do any little surprise on side or anything here. Fairmont State looks like they're protecting against that just in case. It's going to be a line drive directly out of bounds and a flag. I'll bring the topper defense back out on the field along with the Fairmont State offense who has been playing very well tonight. 
It's had some difficult moments, been put in difficult positions, and turned them into big-time gains. And right now, they just want to run the clock. Yeah, and this is where... This is where, as this new rule change came in, the coaches thought they were going to try to emphasize you get leads in the fourth quarter. If you can continue to move chains, clock doesn't stop. You start taking snaps with two or three seconds left on the play clock, and you can shorten the game a few minutes. Farrow on the carry, breaks a tackle. He's running. Got one man to beat. He does not a shoelace tackle for the Hilltoppers. That was Chris Wilson on the touchdown saving tackle for West Liberty. It's a great tackle there. But wow, what another chunk play. How many in, in this game? A couple drives ago, it was Crosby, the running back for Fairmont, having himself a couple... A few good plays. Now it's Farrow doing the same. <laughs> Farrow fumbles the fu fumbles the handoff. Who has it? Couldn't tell. <laughs> West Liberty recovers. Wow. The defense makes a big play. It's a good break. Exactly what the toppers needed. Fairmont makes a mistake, and they pounce on a loose football. And this is where you're just trying to, to build a culture here, Todd. They did it last week, down 24 nothing, came back and cut it to a one-score game there, cut it to a three-point game. Um, here you're down 19. You just scored on the last drive. You fortunate enough to pick up a turnover and can you get another quick score to make this thing interesting Garcia quickly out for Charles he's going to be brought down after a good gain of about seven well maybe maybe it was six we'll call it second down and four Garcia looks down the middle, fires it, passes tipped, almost caught by the toppers. What a play that would have been. In and out of the hands, Corelli Johnson, the second, almost came up with that for West Liberty. Another one of those plays we talk about, you know, a <laughs> bang, bang, you, there's a deflection and... All those years, teams practice those uh, tip ball drills. Usually it's on the defense, but West Liberty had a chance to pull a Franco Harris there. <laughs> Just wasn't able to hang on. False start on the Hilltoppers. I'll call that number five, Chris Charles, right in front of the linesman. So it went from third manageable to third and eight. Fairmont will make a substitution. Looks like they want to get more speed on the edge. Number 15, Kylan Macklin. I'm sorry, 52, Kylan Macklin in for Fairmont State. Garcia fires it, passes caught. Has enough for the first down. Still on his feet, refuses to go down. Finally, the whistle is blown. Corelli Johnson, the second. The man who almost caught the tip pass gets the first down there for the toppers. Another big throw by Rudy Garcia. He's probably up. We don't have the last stat sheet, but he's flirting with the 300-yard mark. He's yep. got to be getting close to it. Garcia looking left, fires at a man is open. It's Harvey. Pass is caught. He's at the 35, still moving, breaks a tackle. Finally brought down at the 25-yard line. The toppers are on the move. 
Another big game for Harvey now. He's up to probably 130 yards receiving and close to double-digit receptions again. Garcia looking left, steps up in the pocket, gets away from the pressure, gains about all oh, the fumble, but they're saying he was down. He was down before the ball came out. Give him a gain of six. Second down and four is coming up. Yeah, let's, let's get up on the ball here. And Garcia, 29 of 40, 344 yards. It's after throwing for 360-some last week, and... Garcia may be, uh, in terms of yardage, hey, Zach Amidro, you want some competition <laughs> for a season? Garcia banged up a little bit, limping, but still getting that pass off. Almost got the first down. Let's see where they spot him. I'll bring up third and very short. Nine twenty-three left to play in the Panhandle fourth quarter. Let's finish this drive, third and one. Garcia looking left, looking back right, fires this one. Almost intercepted, and boy, if he would have held on to that one with the way that Garcia is limping around, the only man that would have had a chance to catch him, not saying he wouldn't have, would have been Kadeem Richards, the tailback. Fortunate for West Liberty there. You know, I wonder if Garcia is not hurt, if they just don't rush up there and do the quarterback sneak yep. again. But I would have thought maybe that on third down. But Fourth down and one. Garcia will remain in shotgun. He'll throw it. Fires at left side, passes caught. First down and taken down at about the seven yard line. Man on the catch, Braden Mason. First and goal from the eight yard line. Time is down to 8.35 in this panhandle fourth quarter. Garcia looks left again, feels the pressure in his face. Harvey, he gets pulled down, a flag. Tell you what, though, this could go against both of them. Can you call it on both of them? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he had his back. The There's a flag in the backfield as well. You know, I, I don't know, meaning at that play, and I, I would love to see it again. The defender has his back to the ball when the contact's first made. So then the hand fighting begins. But Okay, first down gets replayed. After the offsetting penalties. And I hope Garcia is all right. He looks all right. Again, he's on the one run. He's got banged up a little bit and got a little bit of a limp. But he will continue to fight. We talked about the resilience this topper team had last week in the second half. They're showing it off again right now. Garcia fires it. Harvey caught. Touchdown, toppers. 8-12 remaining in the Panhandle fourth quarter, and the Toppers are trying to get back into this ball game. That was Chris Charles, wasn't it? The five and the twos look okay. very similar. My apologies, it was Charles.
Well, Dell will try to make this. It is. It's no good, but it is still a two score game. 42 29. 8 12 left to play in the Panhandle fourth quarter. We will take a quick break and come right back on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. Where are you going? The store in West Liberty. The store is open seven days a week with daily lunch specials, hot food and cold sandwiches, Patsy's Pizza, and a wide selection of chips, pop, and other snacks, as well as household goods and hygiene products. We've also got a wide selection of beer and an ATM. Stop on in and check out the store, located at the top of the hill in the town of West Liberty, a proud supporter of Hilltopper Athletics. Welcome back to West Family Stadium. The Toppers down by 13 points. And with the way that we've seen, oh, honestly, both of these offenses at times in this game, you could say uh, either one of them could score two touchdowns in the last eight minutes. And Fairmont State again lining up as to prevent an onside kick. Only one man back deep. You know, this is one of these places, if you can pooch it over top of that the up guys, maybe it's a mad scramble and you run down a loose ball. There's a lot of ground to cover. Just going to boot this one as far as he can. Caught it about the 12. Farrow. Good gain up to the 35 and is brought down. That is where the Fairmont State offense will pick up once again and see if the topper defense can make another big play here. Do we have one more one more stop in us, get the ball back? Make this thing interesting. As Fairmont gets back on the field, Crosby in the backfield. Now, Todd, would you have believed this? Both teams have had an equal number of possessions. West Liberty only has ten less yards than Fairmont. No. <laughs> I would not have believed that one bit. Crosby a decent run. Give him five. Bring up second and five. Crosby almost to 100 yards. I believe that carry gave him 99 yards. One more and he will crack the century mark. Rudy Garcia, 32 of 44. One pick, three TDs, 363 yards. Sean Harvey, nine catches, 132 yards. Chris Charles, seven for 62. This topper passing attack is something to be feared in the conference after these two weeks. Crosby again gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage, driven backwards, a loss of a couple. Bring up third and seven. Topper sideline and defense wanting the crowd to get loud here at West Family Stadium. This is a big moment. Just under seven minutes remain in the Panhandle fourth quarter. You know, again, just let's make this thing interesting. Let's get a three and out here and get the ball back and see if we can make this thing interesting. Crosby. Stuffed again. The topper defense is there to make the big play when it's needed. Number two, Tyson Fasuamanu. I apologize if I said that incorrectly, but what a play he just made. And the toppers have life. So who called the timeout there? I believe West Liberty yes, took the West timeout. Liberty, They've yeah. got two left. 6.32 left to play in this panhandle fourth quarter. And boy, has this been fun to watch late in the second half. Well, we know in college football, there's just been so many examples of historic type comebacks. Teams down 25, 30 points. 
Um, you can just put points on the board so quickly. Back to return for the toppers. Braden Mason on to kick. Scout Arthur for Fairmont State. And we've seen a lot of penalties on both teams during special teams and punts tonight. Let's see if this one will draw a yellow flag. Oh. Punt is blocked by the toppers. Trying to get on top of it, and they do. West Liberty gets it <laughs> at the 40-yard line. Wow. <laughs> you know, that was an incredible block because they had the three blockers there. West Liberty rushed with two guys straight up the middle, and they just bull rushed them. I don't know who got their hand on it, but that's a big-time play. Unbelievable. 6.24 to play, and the toppers down by 13. And that was a block by Ben Turner, number 10. He had a, a moment earlier in the game he probably wishes he could have back. Now he makes up for it. <laughs> Garcia has to scramble a little bit. Still looking downfield. A flag is down. It probably will end up being offensive holding. Make you don't. You don't need to get this all back in one play here. You don't. You don't like the hold on first down, but. There's still 6.17 left. You're down 13. Just get some of it back on this play. And live to have another down here. Garcia feels the pressure, gets away from it again. And did he get rid of that ball before? He was out of the tackle box. That ball definitely got to the line of scrimmage. Fairmont State wanting an intentional grounding. They call him down. They're going to say he was down before he released it. So technically could be considered maybe a sack if somebody from Fairmont got a hand on him. So it brings up second down and long. Fairmont has brought the heat on the last two plays. Inspired pass rush. Charles makes the catch on this one for the toppers, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll make it third down and about 13. And this is probably two down territory. So again, you don't have to get it all in one chunk. Be great if you can, but if you can pick up eight or nine here and make it an easier fourth down conversion. We've heard Coach Wiley on your coach's show with you talk about using the two-minute drill and how well Rudy Garcia read the plays and how well they played doing that. Let's see if they can do it again. Garcia fires this one across the middle. Pass incomplete as it hit the ground. Garcia had a bunch of pressure. That's fourth down, 13. 5.14 left to play in the Panhandle fourth quarter. Yeah, the key here is Fairmont's just teeing off on the pass rush. You know, if you could just somehow give him a chance to set his feet here, and that was a bobbled snap too, so blew up the timing of the throw. Good blocking, steps up, fires it, pass is caught, That's first, first down. down. That's a big time strike. Joshua Clark. A big play, and the toppers again have life with just under five minutes left. That's a big time. Now, I like getting on the ball here. You know, as soon as that thing gets spotted, get on the ball, and let's get a trip to the end zone here, Todd. <laughs> Garcia looks left, feels the pressure. Are they going to say he was down? He's trying to plead his case, saying his knee never touched, but they're going to say his elbows did, and that's enough. So I don't even know if anyone from Fairmont touched him on that. It's almost like he kneeled on the ball. It's just the, the pass rush is really starting to take effect. You know, he had to, to break the pocket. Clark caught, 
just inside the 20. Couldn't get out of bounds, but. That's Charles, I think. Is that five? Yes, it is. Sorry about that, Charles. Third down and three. Pass is caught again by Charles, this time for the first down. And gets out of bounds, so let's get up on the ball. Because that clock starts as soon as they set it. And I don't like the rule. I mean, that rule changed several years ago. But yeah. I was the traditionalist college football because I'm a stat nerd and also <laughs> gave, gave more opportunities. But we just got to get in here. You know, there's only 321 left. Now, West Liberty does have two timeouts left. So if they can find the end zone. But well, Fairmont State will take the timeout. 313 left in the Panhandle fourth quarter. We will take a very, very quick break with 313 left in this ball game. Toppers down by 13. We will be right back for more on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network on Topper Station. Well, for over 25 years, I've practiced at Wheeling Hospital and WV Wheeling Hospital. I grew up here. I am dedicated and feel a commitment to the Ohio Valley, and I believe that's our continued mission. We've been challenged over the past three years with the pandemic, but we've emerged stronger. The people that work here are here mostly because they want to be here. And when there is a desire to be at work, it makes for a more productive area and certainly a happier area. And welcome back for more of the Panhandle fourth quarter, 313 to play. Toppers down by 13 and driving first and 10 on the 15 yard line, trying to make this a one score game. Play action. Garcia fires it middle of the field. Pass is tipped. Oh, incomplete. Intended for Christian Banks. Oh. Wow, was that a good ball. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like it was going to hit the mark. Huh. <sighs> So now the toppers will have second and 10 from the 15-yard line. Trips to the top of the screen for Rudy Garcia. Now a flag. The umpire calls a false start. They call it on the true freshman center, number 66, Mason Fraley. And I was a center. I very much disliked. I don't know if this is what they called, but if you try to move the football or pick it up any little bit off the ground, they'll throw the flag. I always hated that. Garcia finds the running back. Richards out of the backfield. And he gets a decent gain. Oh, I guess just a gain of one. I'm sorry, no, he gets a gain of six. I apologize. Yep. It'll be third down and nine from the 14-yard line. Good check down there. You know, didn't force the ball and still have two downs left here to pick up these 10 yards. Garcia looking left, fires it. Pass is going to be intercepted at the two-yard line. Fairmont State. Huge play there to kind of seal this ball game. That one was picked off by Isaiah Powell Major, a redshirt sophomore. And Fairmont State looks like they'll escape West Liberty with a victory. You know, Rudy had played so well. I mean, again, we had a drop earlier. That was a touchdown, probably, but was somebody's fourth turnover of the day? I believe so. 
Still two timeouts left. Almost, almost a mistake on the handoff there for Floria. But Derek Crosby, the second, able to hang on to that football. Timeout, West Liberty. They'll add a couple more seconds onto the game clock. We will take a look forward just a little bit as West Liberty will take on Fairmont, I'm sorry, Frostburg State, September 16th at 1 p.m. at Frostburg. And that was one of the things back when I was calling games here before that would kind of mess me up. There were now two FSUs in the uh, in the conference. I always think Fairmont, even when I watch Florida State play, I say Fairmont, I can't help it. Uh, and then I see Frostburg, Fairmont comes out all the time. Hey, here's a pet peeve I have. Um, when the media or anybody, and we may even do it at West Liberty at times, where you only use logos. <laughs> like, I'm an NBA guy. <laughs> I know more NBA than about anybody. But with my eyesight and when you see small logos, I can't tell who the team's on. <laughs> and a good run here for Crosby. Makes a nice little move for a big gain. Crosby tonight over 100 yards and a touchdown. And that's going to do it. West Liberty with, I think, one timeout left, right? I believe so. So with two minutes remaining in the Panhandle fourth quarter, First and 10, Fairmont State up by 13. Florio will hand this one off. Crosby again finds some open space on the right side. Again, good downfield blocking when needed for Fairmont. And Crosby is having himself what might be a career night. And there's no moral victories, but this thing was close to getting away from West Liberty. It was 42-16. And the Hilltoppers are first to go with the 10 with a chance to cut it to a five-point game. Yep. Pistol formation for Floria again, first and 10. Letting the clock run down as much as they possibly can. It'll be under a minute remaining after this play. Crosby uh, just getting back to the line of scrimmage on that one. And we might get one more play in this ball game and we'll see if they go victory formation or not. They will. Fairmont State will kneel this, and the ball game will be over. They will move on to 2-0 and on this season. West Liberty 0-2. But again, we mentioned it before this game, the resilience that West Liberty showed in the second half at Walsh last week. They did it again tonight. It's just one of those things where if you can limit the mistakes when you can limit them, uh, they can be in just about any football game that they're going to play in this season. Nice. Yeah, it, it's there were so many big moments. They just could not make the big play when they absolutely needed that big play. And that's the difference. Well, final score, 42-29 in favor of Fairmont State. They now lead the all-time series 44-40-5. Uh, West Liberty's streak of two in a row against Fairmont the last two years is over. As Kate, Coach Jason Woodman gets a victory over the toppers. Well, Coach, again next week at Frostburg State, September 16th at 1 p.m. The next home game will be September 23rd. It is homecoming against 
UMC Pembroke. That'll also be at 1 o'clock here at West Family Stadium. All right. Well, Todd, it's great uh, having you back and working with you. And It was an entertaining game. We had some fun. Absolutely was. It was worth staying up late to watch this one. Again, it's great to be back here at West Liberty calling football games. Uh, thank you to everyone, our student crew. Um, I was going to mention names, but I can't remember all of them, and I've made that mistake before in the past. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, thanks to Teresa Gretchen, uh, Trent Nicholson. Uh, Coach, it is great to be here again, and uh, thank you to everyone that helped us out and watched here tonight. We will be back in two weeks again, September 23rd. UNC Pembroke comes to West Liberty uh, to take on the Hilltoppers on the homecoming game at 1 p.m. next week, September 16th at Frostburg State. At 1 p.m., the Toppers will play again and hopefully get their first victory of the season. All right, see you next week. Have a good one, folks. What if your bank offers CDs with consistently competitive and higher interest rates? That's what I want. What if, unlike other banks, they're normally open more hours? And they don't use high teaser rates on CDs only to lower them later. Isn't that the way all banks should be? And even more, several of their CD accounts have some of the best interest rates. That's money in the bank. The right bank. Open your CD account at Main Street Bank. You deserve a bank this good. Hi, I'm Keith Powell with Yes Chevy and Yes Ford. And right now at our Let's Trade Keys event, give me the keys to your old ride and pick out the keys to any car on my lot. And your payments will stay the same until 2024. But hurry, I can only help the first 77 people only at Yes Chevy in Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington, where every car comes with a lifetime warranty. It's good to have options when choosing health coverage for your family, your employees, and your company. You want to plan with people you know, like the health plan. Known for exceptional local customer service. And are headquartered right here in West Virginia. We are families. We are businesses. And we are all moving forward together. We are here for you. The health plan. What are you working for? Do you want to pursue your athletic potential while earning a degree that will benefit you for a lifetime? Do you want to play at the highest level in your sport? Do you want to be a champion? That's what the proud members of the Mountain East Conference are advancing toward every day. Providing opportunities and pursuing excellence. The Mountain East Conference. Hi, I'm Heather, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is getting the perfect bite. It's probably not the first bite, it's the second or the third, with the juicy chicken and the delicious pickle. The bite with the pickle is it. I mean, that is like the magic combination. You shouldn't pay maintenance fees or be required to have a minimum balance in your checking account. And if you use an ATM and have to pay a fee, your bank should pay you back for that. But that's what you get with Casasa Cash, only at Belmont Savings Bank. The region's largest restoration firm, responding from five locations. When disaster strikes your home or business, call Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. It pays for my master's degree. I can't believe that this happened. It's just a pivotal, life-changing moment. They'll probably never know about his thousands of hours of on-the-job training. Hey, go daddy. Or that he spent as much time in the classroom as someone with a master's degree. You and I know he's one of the experts when it comes to electricity. Part of a team committed to doing the job right. They call him dad. You call him the electrician right down the street. IBEW, the power professionals in your neighborhood. Where are you going? The store in West Liberty. The store is open seven days a week with daily lunch specials, hot food and cold sandwiches, Patsy's Pizza, and a wide selection of chips, pop, and other snacks, as well as household goods and hygiene products. We've also got a wide selection of beer and an ATM. Stop on in and check out the store, located at the top of the hill in the town of West Liberty. 
a proud supporter of Hilltopper Athletics. Well, for over 25 years, I've practiced at Wheeling Hospital and WVU Wheeling Hospital. I grew up here. I am dedicated and feel a commitment to the Ohio Valley, and I believe that's our continued mission. We've been challenged over the past three years with the pandemic, but we've emerged stronger. The people that work here are here mostly because they want to be here. And when 